think of that traffic leaving PC, layer three information coming into the switch. This switch is going to move the data layer two and move it up through here to go back to layer three. Now, you'll have a better understanding about this when we go into, uh, it's either going to be the next section or the next section after that when we talk about the OSI model. So let's talk about an IP address. What does it look like? An IP address has four digits, four sets of numbers, I should say, not four digits, but four sets of numbers. Now, I have to tell you, this is IP version four. Version six is a lot different, but we're going to focus on IP version four. We have four different sets of numbers. Each one of these numbers can be anywhere from zero to 255, except this number. This number here, this first digit, can have a range between 1 to 255. All these, the rest of them, can have 0 to 255. So you will see a number similar to this. 192.168.1.1. This is an IP address. Notice this is within our range, 1 to 255. So you would never see a number like 192, 256, 380, uh, 358, dot uh, 300. This is an invalid number for this section. This is invalid, and this is invalid. You can't have these numbers more than 255. You'll find out later why that is, but at this point, just remember that this is the basics of an IP address. You have four digits. So in these four digits, you have what is called a network number. and our host number. For now, think of the network number as your network A, network B. So if I had a network number of 192.168.1.0, this is telling me this is the network that I belong to. My network numbers are going to be 1, 168, 192 or 192.168.1. We do read it from left to right. If I had a number of 192.168.1.1, that means this is a this is really the host number. So that's interesting because that means every every PC, every router, everything that has an IP address will have a network number and one number that identifies them on that network. So if we're on the 192.168.1 network, if I gave this IP address to here, he will be number one on that network. If I gave this a 192.168.1.27, okay, he will be number 27 of the 192.168.1 network. Host means PC, printer, whatever you also want to call it. It also means node. Good to know. So that's what an IP address is. So what is a MAC address? Now, before we talk about MAC addresses, remember IP addresses is a layer three concept. And believe me, you will be reminded of this on a regular basis. So what is a MAC address? A MAC address is set up with these interesting numbers here. 
A, B, C, D, E, F, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Each one of these digits, notice that we have how many numbers there, if we count them all. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. We have 12 numbers, and each one of these digits can have a value of 0 to 9, or A through F. Now, what is this A through F? This is what we call hexadecimal. Hexadecimal is a way of writing this in a way where we can use numbers and uh, letters. The idea of this is we want to have the ability to have a way of each one of these digits having a range of 15, which means it could be 15 different values. Now, how can I actually have 15 different values if after I get to the digit 9, I can't write 10 as a one digit? I just can't. Can't be done. Now, the nice thing about it is, if I want to write a 10, I will use the letter A. 11 will be B, 12 will be C, 13 will be D, 14 will be E, and 15 will be F. So you would never see in a hexadecimal value, as far as our MAC addresses are concerned, you would never see anything higher than an F, and you would see anything that's 0 through 9. So if I look at my MAC address here on my PC, let's take a look at it. Here's an interesting MAC address number, 00261882000B1. Every network card has a MAC address. IP addresses is what you assign yourself, but the MAC addresses are already on the network cards when you buy them. Now... This, because of this, this allows a switch to create a table with all the MAC addresses that are communicating on this. That means this PC has an IP address and a MAC address. If the MAC address is A, B, C, D, we're going to write like this because this is how Cisco writes it, E, F, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, I'm going to have a little trouble here. Three, four, five, six. If this is the MAC address number of this PC, then when PC sends the data and trying to reach over here to router 1, this switch will record this MAC address and put it in this MAC table. And there it will sit. And it will say, look, this MAC address of A, B, C, D, dot X, whatever, matches to port, uh, we'll say it's port, uh, we'll just say this is port 1 of the switch, matches to port 1. So now anytime data is being sent into this switch and needs to reach this MAC address, it will automatically look in this table and say, oh, I know what that MAC address is sitting. It's sitting on this port. Let's send it out. So we can forward data by MAC addresses. That's the job of a switch. So now you've learned that a router will actually send data based on IP addresses, which sits at layer three and switches will will move data through the switch and send it out another interface 
based on the MAC address. And that's what we call layer two. So that's why I said that when this traffic is leaving this PC, it's leaving as a layer three information. It comes into the switch. This switch will forward this information via layer two. That data will go out here as layer two information. This router will open, will, will look at this information, look at the layer three information and forward it on based on the destination IP address or the IP address that we're trying to go to. Interesting, but this is what happens. And trust me, we'll get more and more deep of this. But this is the basics for right now. So that means we have two major components. We have an IP address. And we have a MAC address. Now, one thing you need to understand, since we're learning these two things now and what they are, really, we're just learning the formats of them, how do they look, and what they're used for. A PC must have both to communicate. Which means when PC1 communicates with PC2, in order for this communication to work, PC1 must have the MAC address and IP address that he wants to communicate with. So if this is an IP address of 192.168.1.1, and this is 192.168.1.2. PC1 says, I want to try to communicate with 192.168.1.2. And he must have the PC's MAC address as well. And this is the MAC address that I want to communicate with. Assuming that's the MAC address of PC2. So in order for communication to happen, we must have an IP address. We must have a MAC address. MAC addresses are easy. They're already on a network card. And you're, that, that was pretty easy for you. The IP addresses are what we actually define ourselves and what we assign. So what does it mean now after all this? What does it mean to be on the same network? Well, let's talk about that. I originally said that 192.168.1 from our previous example was my network number. So I will write this out as 192.168.1.0. I'm not gonna put a zero there, I'm just gonna put an X. So this is my network number. These are my networks. This is my host. If this was my network number, then this is, and this was my host, let's understand what that really means. So you're going to have two parts of an IP address, the network and the host. Now the host is whatever is not the network. Does that make sense? So if my network was 192.168, then this would be my host. Now, based on the IP address that we're using now, you would never see this fashion. But again, if that if we could do this with the 192 address, then that's what you would see. Anything that's not the network or host. At this point, we have three of the numbers that are our network number, and only one of them are host. And each one of these numbers cannot go higher than 255. And if we actually use zero as a network number, then obviously I have a value of 1 to 254. And you'll understand this later on, why it's only 254. We could have a 255 that we can actually ping to. We just couldn't put it on an interface. And there's a reason for that, which you'll learn later on as well. So what does it mean to be on the same network? That means anyone that has this same exact numbers as the network portion of the IP address will be able to communicate. So if I have a host with a 192.168.1 network, 
I'll put the other number in there later on. And a 192, that 168, that one, that we'll make this 10, we'll make this five. Well, the question is, with PC1 and PC2, are their network numbers the same? 192.168.1, 192.168.1. They are the same, so they're on the same network. This is the fifth host, this is the tenth host. And not because we put them in order, it's just the fact that that's just number 10. Does that make sense? So think about this as an address perspective. You live at 123 Fake Street. At nowhere. Nowhere, Virginia. Okay, nowhere Virginia. Let's just write, write no, nowhere VA. No point in writing it all out. Nowhere VA, uh, two zero one two one. Okay. Think of this as your network. Think about it. Anyone who lives at this particular address can communicate with each other, right? My name is Kyle. That's my host name. That's who I am. Okay? If Bob was living with me, Bob would also have an identifier. His identifier is Bob. So when Kyle needs to communicate with Bob, he will call out, Hey, Bob. With PC2, when he's trying to communicate with... Uh, B, well, I'm sorry, with PC1, he's trying to communicate with PC2, guess who he's going to say? Hey, Ten. How you doing? Let's chat. But he's not going to say, hey, 10. He's going to say, hey, 192.168.1.10. How you doing? Now, if I put this as a 2, these networks are not the same. 192.168.2, that's the network. And 192.168.1, they're not the same. 192.168.1, 192.168.2. Not the same network. Therefore, if our network numbers are different, there's no communication. They're not going to be able to communicate with each other. This is what it means to be on the same network. And we already talked about bits and kilobits, and megabits, and gigabits. And that's pretty, it, that's pretty much it for the network fundamentals. This is really giving you a decent understanding of the basics of the network fundamentals. We still got three more chapters to go through. But as far as this is concerned, this chapter really gets involved with explaining the basics of what a network is. That was really what this chapter is about. What does it mean? What are these terms that we're going to use? How do we, you know, how, you know, what, what is it, how do they all fit together? What does it all mean? And that's pretty much it with this particular course, as far as this chapter one, and I will see you at chapter two.